In today's review, we're not only going to be looking at what is potentially one of my favorite sets LEGO have ever made for the Star Wars theme, but we're first going to dive into the minifigures, then take a look at the set, take a look at the stickers, which is going to be quite interesting, test the weight of this, find how it compares to the value of other LEGO sets, the anniversary figs as well, we do get one in this set, we'll be looking at all the others that I've got and a few from years before and after it on top of other figures that could have come in the set, it was a pretty cheap set but we could have got a few new minifigures on top of custom minifigures I've made with pieces from this set, a little Cobb Vanth mock which is going to be exclusive to this video if you do choose to stick around. It also shows up in Rebuild the Galaxy, we'll talk more on that later and about my minifigure scale because this is the set that started it all. So we've got a lot to cover today. I think without further ado, let's jump straight into the minifigures that we get with Anakin's Pod Racer. It was a fairly cheap set when this came out, all the way back in 2019 for the 20th anniversary of LEGO Star Wars as a theme. So we only get two minifigures with this set. First up, we have this Anakin Skywalker, who isn't the best Anakin we've got, and we will be taking a look at that in a second. He does come with a dual-sided face and a wrench for an accessory when he's not piloting his pod racer, which is a lovely piece to be getting because it does also work as a brick separator. The other minifigure in this set is Padme, who is a very welcome addition because LEGO haven't made as many Padmes as they have for other characters. We've now got every Luke Skywalker costume we could want in LEGO. And there are still so many iconic Padme outfits that we're yet to get. But this Padme does come with a dual-sided face and also a blaster, which is a bit funny considering she doesn't use a blaster on Tatooine, at least as far as I remember. But it's nice we've still been given an accessory. We do technically get a third minifigure in this anniversary Luke Skywalker minifigure, but like I said at the start of the video, we will be taking a look at all these minifigures later. So as far as the detail on this set goes, and you can see the production quality on this video has been updated a little bit, we can now see 180 degrees of this set, making sure that each angle is in focus. The set is a really, really good model. I think there's a little over 250 pieces, if my memory serves me correct. And you are getting 14 stickers in this set, most of which are focusing on Anakin's cockpit, but you do get six of these stickers just on the fins here, which add that extra little bit of detail you wouldn't be getting with regular Lego bricks. Though there's definitely an argument, there's six of them, could LEGO have printed them instead? As for the cockpit, you could always not apply the stickers and instead try to use colored bricks, but I just don't think you're gonna get anywhere near the detail that you would if you use the stickers. So I'm actually gonna side with LEGO for this set and think that to try and get the extra detail to make this look better than the version released in 1999 that this set is paying its respects to. Stickers were definitely a necessary part of this build. By swapping out our turntable for a set of scales, we'll be able to see that this weighs in at about 157 grams, which puts it at a similar value of 16 pence per gram to the Pirate Snub Fighter, which I know many of you aren't picking up because it seems like a very expensive set. But what makes this set any better? I think there's a strong argument for the fact that we do get a third minifigure in this set in the form of an anniversary minifigure and perhaps the Pirate Snub Fighter could have benefited from one this year. But that would have been pretty hard to have done considering the set come out last year. As well as Luke Skywalker, we did get a few other minifigures in, I think there were about six of them released throughout the year in different sets. I picked up this Princess Leia in the 20th Anniversary Slave one, and also was able to get this Kenobi in a poly bag that I think was released around May 4th. Now, as for the rest of the minifigures, I'm still waiting to collect some of the missing parts for Han Solo and Darth Vader, and my Lando Calrissian is basically non-existent, considering the only piece I have are these black legs that were so common. But like I mentioned, this year we're also getting some anniversary minifigures and they're able to attach onto the same plates as the old ones. Though 
It's definitely worth noting that the new minifigures don't come with the 2x4 plate needed to connect them. If we go back 10 years ago, we did get another yellow faced minifigure. However, because this one came in a book, we don't have a base to connect him to the rest, but that can be easily changed just by adding a four by six modified plate tile onto two of these arch pieces and you can connect your Luke Skywalker to the rest of your minifigure. So it's definitely a collection I want to grow in the future, but it's nice to see that the base plates from 2019 still connect to the ones used today. Hopefully this is something that Lego continue to do going forward just for the continuity of their anniversary minifigures. Although we know that LEGO was trying to recreate their 1999 set, which only came with the same two minifigures, they've released so many different minifigures in other variations of the set, which includes this Anakin Skywalker minifigure, which I think is far superior to the one we got five years ago and it's mainly to do with the design on his helmet so what we're going to do is take the head and helmet from that minifigure and add it to the new torso which has some slightly updated printing and it's just so much better than that brown helmet and goggles we get i understand with park constraints they might not be able to have a printed helmet but just look at the detail on that helmet alternatively if you own this minifigure which come in a T16 and Bantha Microfighter twin pack. You can also use this helmet to represent Anakin's pod racing helmet because it has a few similar designs and is printed on a gray helmet. But that leaves us with Anakin's old pod racing torso. And there's a minifigure Lego hasn't made, and I'm surprised Lego haven't made them, even as an anniversary minifigure, but this torso is perfect. And that minifigure is none other than Shmi Skywalker. I don't really know why LEGO haven't given us a Shmi Skywalker, but perhaps it's because we haven't got any other sets from Phantom Menace on Tatooine besides sets like Anakin's Pod Racer, where Shmi doesn't fit as well as other characters. For example, some of the other Pod Racers, such as Sebulba here, who I have cracked the arms to, but I've replaced them with a mix of modified tiles and some of these dark bluish gray droid arms. But he's not the only pod racer we have got from LEGO. And LEGO have actually given us two other pod racers, Gascano and Aldar Bido, which they might not be perfect. And these are my mocks of the minifigures because they come in some very old sets. But it would be nice to get a giant pod racing bundle in the future with a few exclusive pod racer minifigures. In the past, we've also seen characters like Wald, who I have here created custom using that Bespin torso from Luke Skywalker, which if you flip it round, works very well with that belt. And I've also used, I think it's Forlom's torso and legs to create this unfinished C-3PO, which again is another minifigure we need alongside Shmi. But Lego have given us a ton of pit droids in these pod racing sets. And again, it's a character I'd like to see a more accurate size mold for, but I'm really enjoying some of the builds LEGO are giving us. I told you at the start of the video there would be an exclusive mock to show towards the end, and it is now time to reveal Cobb Vamp Speed Up from The Mandalorian. It's perhaps one of the easiest mocks that I've put together, having only to add Cobb Vamp Seat to the engine of Anakin's pod racer. And as the set itself is minifigure scale, again, we'll get to that in a second. This ship is also minifigure scale and would work great with any Mandalorian mock and custom Cobb Vanth minifigure, as again, it's another character we haven't seen Lego design. But Cobb Vanth isn't the only person that has flown a part of Anakin's speeder, as well as Anakin having driven the pod racer himself in Phantom Menace. We now have Luke Skywalker from Rebuild the Galaxy. And though I don't own the correct minifigure, you can definitely part out my custom that I have made a short of, and I will leave it linked in the description if you haven't already seen. And this pod racer still holds up to what we see in the Lego Star Wars show, because even though it was made in mind with a minifigure, 
that has short legs only takes up two studs. You can fit a full-size minifigure in the set and it really stands up to the test of time. The model used in Rebuild the Galaxy is identical to this one released, obviously without the clear Technic bricks holding it up. But if you wanted to position this in a mock on your shelf, you can definitely remove them and hide it a bit better. That is just for the support of the set and it's actually really easy to do. And if you are looking at picking this up brand new, it still only goes for about 30, 40 pound, which I think if you really want the set, is worth every penny and as this set is exactly 1 to 45 scale which is fairly uncommon for lego sets so there are other sets like the 2012 tie and the ATTE they still aren't the lego market it means it also scales to every other mock i've built on this channel which is great for getting a feel of just how big anakin's pod racer actually is. Hopefully this video has given you just a little insight into why this is one of my favorite Lego Star Wars sets they have ever made and I don't think this thing is ever going to be broken down. So you can usually see it in my background. I keep it just above frame for the most part but when I have more space this will be prominently displayed on my shelves. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. Check out all the videos on screen now and I hope you have an amazing day. May the bricks be with you always.